represent Solomon Island people say We people celebrating only from my homeland Like my old man say There's nothing impossible So we have to bring this message to my brother Lyrical straight from the crew Out to the blue We represent the voices of my ancestors calling And I was getting more than my culture is falling Now we have to step up for the past when it's calling Now we have to stop Ain't nobody gonna stop us People, everybody, would you listen to us for a start? No boy complaining and that's we partaking We represent the fire of the ones falling We resemble true art When we bust the line Flip the rabbits from the heart no, no Previously on Delos We lost track of time in El Nido Got our anchor chain stuck on a coral bomby And got our asses kicked while sailing to Puerto Princesa Stressing out struggles in the metaphor we've been through it all Every day crying, but we held on to that one silver line Hoping and praying, no wonder we'll be heard It's our last day in the Philippines, how do you feel? It is our last day, it feels really weird, I don't know how it feels It still feels unreal, yeah, for sure But exciting as well, I mean it's gonna be amazing diving to the Taha And then my brother's flying in, and yeah Our plan two months in the Philippines had turned into a blissful eight. We were captivated by the beauty and friendliness of the people, and by the extraordinary islands with adventure around every corner. But the typhoon season was fast approaching, so we were going to run south, towards Malaysian Borneo and the safety of the equator. Before heading out on any major passage, there's always a few chores to take care of. We were expecting light and variable winds, so we needed to top off Delos's diesel tanks. So we're almost done. This is the last part. And when we're siphoning fuel into Delos, I always use our trusty Baja filter because it has like three uh, screens that filter out all the dirt, the sediment, and the water. So anything that we get from the tanks at the fuel station or the jerry jugs gets filtered out by this so it doesn't get in our tank. So now the trick is to siphon it into the tank without swallowing a bunch of diesel. Once provisions were ferried back in Maggie, it was time to check the rig. The rigging on Delos is 14 years old now, so I'd like to keep a close eye on it. Before every passage, I head to the top to check all the pins, swages, and fittings for signs of wear. I'm basically looking for cracks, rust buildup in the swages, or broken strands. Anything out of the ordinary. From the outside all looked well, so it was time for us to check out. Tubadaha Reef is right smack in the middle of the Sulu Sea, about 90 nautical miles southeast of Puerto Princesa. Since it was kind of on the way to Malaysia, we decided to get a permit and check it out. For the last 25 years it's been a marine park, and protected by the Filipino Navy and Coast Guard. You can only get there by boat. And to do so, you need a special permit from the government. But first, you need a clearance from Filipino Customs. Usually yachts don't bother with customs in the Philippines. It's only for larger, commercial ships. So they don't get a lot of random dudes walking in, asking for a customs clearance. But they were super cool, and a lot of fun. I paid the processing fee of 240 pesos, about $6 US, and was handed our customs clearance. We then posed for a few pictures, as you do in official government offices here in the Philippines. Next, we were off to the Tubadaha Management Board Office, 
to fill out some more paperwork and get our entry permit for the park, which required an entry fee consisting of a wad of pesos. In the meantime, our friends Liam and Gabby had arrived from Manila. We met them at the Malasimba Festival, and since they were keen divers, invited them along for the trip. Aiden and Ree finally arrived from Manila, and the crew was complete. We headed off to the final checking out step, immigration. We filled out some more paperwork, got some more official stamps, waited for a while, and then finally it was photo time, and we knew all was well. So does everybody have everything? Yep. Okay. Red day. Next stop, pharmacy. Let's go to Malaysia. Yeah, let's do it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. We departed Puerto Princesa and set out east for the overnight sail to Tubataha Reef. We were a little broken up to leave the Philippines. We'd really connect with the people and culture here, more so than any other stop Delos has made. So it was especially sad to leave. But that's part of sailing. You sail into a foreign place not knowing anything. You get to know and love its people and cultures, and then you have to leave. But the seasons were changing, and Delos needed to move south towards the equator. We made it through all the gnarly squalls and sighted Tupataha Reef early in the morning. You see the buoy over there? It's uh, kind of surrounded by shallow water, but we should be able to go in safe and hook up and uh, just relax for a little bit. The charts are notoriously bad here, some off by eight miles or more. In fact, an American minesweeper ran aground here not too long ago, so we had all hands on deck for reef spotting. We made it in safely, and hooked up to one of the provided moorings. The park rangers came by, and we showed them our permit from Puerto Princesa. They had a few rules like no dumping of sewage, no trash, and especially no anchoring. We were only to use the moorings set by the rangers. It was really cool to see how these guys were protecting this awesome spot and know that our money helped to fund their work. Bye guys, thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. Tubata has a lot going for it. First off, it's in a pretty remote location. It's far away from major population centers and only accessible by boat.
Raja Ampat in Indonesia had more diversity in coral, but Tubataha blew it away when it came to large pelagics, sharks, and turtles. There are vertical drop-offs everywhere. One of my favorite things to do is swim to the edge, breathe out deeply, then drop like a stone. There's nothing else quite like it. And here you could go as deep as you dared. We saw a turtle as big as the ones we saw in Australia and it's right under the boat. Awesome. It's just bunching away at coral and it's not afraid of us at all. It's awesome. At least a two meter shark, like just a little bit that way. Yeah. Well, there was one, there was the one white tip in the beginning. You see yeah, that? Like, pretty big, yeah. Yeah, I chased it down and then it circled back around and started coming at us. I was like, whoa. <laughs> I think this is how people get bitten. <laughs> We dove all day, every day, for the entire week. But we were getting pretty beat up on the mornings. It was pretty late in the season. In fact, we were the last boat allowed to make the trip until next year. The monsoon was changing quickly, and every evening bright sunny skies would change to ominous clouds and gnarly squalls. With no land to protect us, the swell sometimes got a bit uncomfortable. But everyone was in really high spirits and had fun with it. So we got some spaghetti bolognese sauce going on right here, man. Hell yeah! Bolognese sauce, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. Did you throw some beer in the hair? We ain't got no beer, but we got some, <laughs> some corn candles. Yeah. We got some mushroom, we got some carrots, onions, garlic, white pepper, black pepper, salt. Basil, shit's going up that hook. Shit smells delicious. Nice and wet out there. On our last day, we decided to visit the Rangers and put foot on land for the first time in five days. Feet on solid ground. The Rangers are Filipino Coast Guard and Navy. They're stationed here for a few weeks at a time and live together in this tiny ranger station keeping watch over the reef. They don't get provisions very often, 
so we decided to bring them some rum and coke. And since it's a bunch of guys away from home, some girly magazines as well. They have radar and HF communication gear to aid with their patrol duties and are completely self-sufficient, running off solar power and even growing their own little garden. Besides protecting the reef, they mostly hung out and played volleyball. I knew we were in for it when they challenged Team Delos. We got worked. These guys obviously practice way more than we do. <laughs> After licking our wounds, we set sail that afternoon. We had another 220 miles of sailing to get us to Malaysia. With the predicted winds, it should be about a two-day sail. A few flying fish landed on deck, which Gabby rigged up to use as trolling bait. Let's do this fishy. We even had a seventh crew member joining us for the trip. What's your name, fishy? I mean, birdie? What kind of bird is that? Oh, hey, it's kind of pretty. Here we have a seabird. Huh? Climbing up Aiden's hand. I just want to see if I can get him on my shoulder. Okay. Oh wow, that's cool. I haven't figured out his name yet. He hasn't told me. But I think he'll be along with us for a while. Help us get to Malaysia. He's gonna guide the way. <laughs> What's that? You want a gift? Don't you know you got somebody? Oh we spotted Borneo, Malaysia on the horizon and got lured in by a beautiful beach about 25 miles from Kudet. Instead of heading directly to check in with the Malaysian officials, we decided to pull a sneaker, where we decided to stop and chill for a bit. A pretty common practice around here. Officially illegal, it's a bit of a gray area in between countries, but as long as you don't make any trouble or delay too long, the practice is tolerated around here. And it was the perfect place for a sneaker, completely uninhabited, crystal clear water, and best of all, we still had a bilge full of Filipino beer. It was a big day for Dallas. For the first time in seven months, we were heading to a dock. Yep, a real dock where you could just tie up and walk right off the boat. We had arrived in the Marina Jetty in Kudat, located on the very northern tip of Malaysian Borneo. Every country you check into is a little bit different, but mostly it involves clearance with customs, immigration, and then the harbor master or marine department. You do the same stuff when you fly in, except here it's all up to you to figure it out. And you're in a semi-legal state until you're all finished. It's very rare that anyone actually boards Dulles to do any kind of inspection. That's it? That's it. Awesome. Uh, wow. Easiest customs players coming. <laughs> Malaysia's super easy though. 
All the offices are very professional, and no one asks for any gifts or bribes. Where are you from, by the way? And origin? Philippines. Philippines. Philippines? America. America? Sweden. Sweden? No, Philippines. Sweden, not in the football club. USA. USA. Yeah. Australia. Yeah. America. Yeah. England. England. Mostly it's just smiles <laughs> and a little bit of small talk. And then you're all sorted. One last stop at Port Clarence, and it was time to chill. Awesome. So that's it. Yes. You're now officially cleared into Malaysia. You're legal citizens now. At first, I, you know, I was double thinking whether I'd come on the trip or not. <laughs> you know, first time sailing. You know, only had a couple of dives under my belt. Going to the reef out in the middle of nowhere, 12 hours to get there, you know? <laughs> Man, what an experience. Awesome experience. It was smooth sailing from day one. Even when it was a little bit squally bullshit. Squally bullshit. <laughs> it was awesome. It was a really good experience. No, I slept through all of the squalls, so I didn't get scared. But I got scared when we went on the night dive, though. So. And I dive into Bataha with a tiger shark <laughs> looming. That was scary, but overall it was awesome. You puked, Gabby. Because <laughs> I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I puked the first day, but it was okay. Oh, you I, did? Yeah, I did. Oh, no. but it was fine though. Because after I did it, I was like, yes. <laughs> You're like a new person. <laughs> Yeah, f you guys for living the life. Hey, no. <laughs> Seriously. We just got to be the really lucky guys who actually followed on the internet and got to jump yeah. into the boat. But, uh, not really, from, I guess, on behalf of... Thank God we got along. The thousands of people following you guys. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Awesome. Well, thanks for showing us the Philippines. It was <laughs> <f> awesome. <laughs> good deal, man. Good trade. Yeah. <laughs> Up next... Karen's bro Ragnar joins the crew. We explore northern Borneo and catch a dynamite reef bomber on camera. Mm, baby, you got something. Hey, don't come easily. Yeah, I want a little bit of your peace. Loving honey from a killer bee. You got to go get it. You know this fish? This guns make me feel a bit crazy. I think I have the fee fish sickness. <laughs>